So, taking the net off the front of the boat, we're just going to do some cross beam maintenance. And, well, it's a bit worse than I um, thought it was. That water, that water's actually quite bad. So this actually um, holds the force day, so it holds the mast up. It's something I'd like to be really strong. Immediately before this, I sailed a 60 mile beam reach in 25 knots and, well, the mast didn't fall over, the beam didn't break, but now that I see the problem, I don't want, don't want it to be something that I'm worrying about. I thought it was just going to be a small bit, soft bit, but it turns out to be actually uh, a lot. And I don't want to just put like scarf right in. I think the best thing is just to make a whole new crossbeam. I had recently been in Whangarei and had only come back to Auckland to haul out my monohull. But while I was in Whangarei, I realised that the plywood store, the good quality plywood store, was um, very close to the river I was anchored in. So... I might as well go get some plywood. I knew I'd need it for something. This beam is right at the front of the boat and it would be good if it could be lighter as the current one weighs 15 kilograms. I had never built a beam like this, but one day I want to build a larger crower and that would need beams, so I thought this would be good practice. So I decided to do a box section beam because hopefully it would be lighter. The first step was cutting the plywood into long strips. Last one. It took a little while to cut out with a handsaw. I prefer to use a handsaw for something like this rather than a jigsaw because, well, first of all, jigsaws vibrate a lot. It's actually quite difficult to do a straight line. Whereas a handsaw, because it goes slowly, you can close the, follow the line very closely. And of course, it's lighter and takes up less space. And I don't actually need to cut out plywood very often, so I think a handsaw is just a better option in this case. I cut six strips. A piece of plywood is 2.4 meters long, but the beam needs to be over three meters. So I cut two of my strips in half to get eight strips, and scarfing those together will give me a beam that's three meters and a bit long. Of course, it's essential that the scarf has the same angle in every piece, and then cut the scarf in all of the pieces in one go. I do that using an angle grinder. Usually I'm cutting a scarf into plywood, and then the veneers and plywood actually help a lot, because you, if you make sure that all of the edges of the veneers are all straight, then the cut's straight. The sawdust will get used in my composting toilet. This is farm to table boat building. Subscribers to my channel will know that the correct way to epoxy wood together is to first paint on neat epoxy and then put on thickened epoxy. And that the reason for this is so that the neat epoxy soaks into the wood and then the thickened epoxy makes a chemical bond deep into the wood, not just a mechanical bond with the surface of the wood. Sorry I didn't get better footage of it than this, but basically I stacked everything up with polythene between each layer and then clamped it all together using the old the old beam um, to line everything up. Here's how it looks in the morning. Everything's pretty good, just a bit of squeeze out thing. Okay, I'm going to use the best two scarves for the sides. I'm going to glue those together first and then the, these ones are going to be the top and bottom. Now this is going to be on the inside obviously, and I'm just going to put some double bias over that, which will probably make it stronger than it was anyway. So I now had four long pieces of plywood that were each one and a half sheets long, but the actual beam is only 3.2 meters long, so I need to cut a little bit off. I wait until after the scarf to cut it, because I wanted to see how the scarf turned out, so I can choose the best pieces on the most important sides. So basically my plan is to create a structure somewhat like bamboo. It's a hollow tube, although mine's going to be square, that has solid nodes distributed along its length. These help stop the beam from twisting or collapsing, as well as providing backing for hardware to be attached. I 
had a 4 by 2 but it wasn't quite the right size to make the internal blocks. Now I do actually have a circular saw that I don't use very often, but I was considering getting rid of it and I only need it for jobs like this, so I wanted to see if I could do that using a hand saw, because um, that would save you know, quite a bit of clutter. So this cut took 8 minutes. But it would have taken a couple of minutes to set up the circular saw, so I think this was a win for the handsaw. Then I needed to cut about 15 blocks off of that. These needed to be square as possible, and my method here was just marking very carefully and then trying to cut as skillfully as I could. That approach actually came out pretty good. I only had to discard one or two blocks. I just gave it a little attention from the angle grinder to make sure everything was even. and then glue it together. Just gluing the sides onto the nodes. Because this is going to be hollow, I want the inside to be sealed really well, but I don't want to do everything all at once, so one step at a time. Tidying up the edges and then I can glue the bottom on. It's important to make the epoxy on the inside is really well sealed, because I never want to open this box again. Paint on one coat and let it seep in. And then after it's gone sticky, but before it's gone hard, I put on a second coat to make sure it's fully sealed. And now the top goes on, closing the box. I was now the proud owner of a sealed plywood box. I weighed the old beam. And the new beam. 8.55. The crossbeam project got delayed for a bit because it was time to haul out my old monohull. But since I had taken all the tools and epoxy over there, I just brought the crossbeam over and worked on it there too, so that's why I'm in a boat yard now. I also measured the stiffness of the beam so I could see how much difference it made with fiberglass on it. I'm calling that 16 millimeters of deflection from my weight in the center. Okay, I'm just prepping for fiberglass in this thing. And since I now had access to plug-in power, I thought maybe I'll try and finish the outside using vacuum bagging. I've marked it. Draw in lines because it's, it's going to wrap around perfectly. I'm going to put these um, carbon strips on the top and bottom. I got given this by my friend Mark. Thanks very much, Mark. This fiber is an off-cut from carbon used from some mega yacht mast or Perhaps even America's cut boat. Gonna get a wrap and peel ply. That is cut into smaller sections so it's easier to handle because it doesn't matter if there's overlaps. I'm gonna try vacuum bagging this. Pretty much improvised with polythene and vacuum cleaner. This is only gonna be my second attempt at vacuum bagging, so I'm gonna give plenty of effort. This is this cloth is gonna be the um, vacuum flow material. I got it from a dumpster, so this is recycling. Making a vacuum bag from polythene and waterproof tape. I've set up the tape sticky side up on the floor and I'm going to carefully pull the bag onto it. Then I lined up the top half and then folded the tape up onto it. I know that the proper vacuum bag technique is to close the bag using double-sided butyl tape but I was having trouble finding that, so this is what I got. My plan was to glass all four sides and then put a layer of carbon on the top and bottom and then vacuum bag it all in one go. This is sped up 30 times and also edited heavily. Actually this took an hour and a half. And the vacuum is on. The idea with this grey cloth is to allow the vacuum to suck the excess epoxy out. It's just an ordinary shop vac, stuck it in the bag and taped around it. I left it running for a couple of hours while the epoxy set. It's the next morning, time for the big reveal. The cloth I'd used actually not particularly suitable and it was a lot of work to rip it away. And then discovered that actually I'd done it wrong. The layer of double biased glass was all down really well, but the carbon on top of that had a few wrinkles and voids under it. It was very disappointing, but what can you do? I had done it wrong. The correct method is Put the vacuum on, suck all the excess air out, then turn off the vacuum, pull it, massage everything out flat, then put the vacuum back on. But anyway, to do a really good vacuum bag, 
you have to be able to do a really good wet layout. So you've got to master the basics first anyway. I kind of hoped that vacuum bagging meant less labour, but actually it requires a lot more preparation and more complexity. So I think I'm going back to the basics. Anyway, thank you Mark for all the good advice and carbon fibre. Anyway, repeated the stiffness test. Here's the difference side by side. A lot stiffer, about half as much deflection. I still had one more piece of carbon so I tidied up the worst side and put another layer on. Finally it was time to put the crossbeam back in the boat. It was just one last thing. The old crossbeams had this hole, had a hole and a liner on it and I think that's a good idea. That's a very good idea because otherwise rock spreads. Metal liner isn't that great. So I used plastic and this plastic conduit fits just perfectly. If I sand that a little bit, I think the epoxy will hold it just fine. This was drilled for 16 mil, but it needs to go to a 20. Now I did a practice run. I was able to drill the 16 and then drill the 20 over it. I set up the beam and a drilling guide and then just drilled all the way through in one go. This ensured that the hole in the trough walls and the beam are all in line without actually measuring everything. I coated the linings and holes with epoxy and then inserted the linings into the holes. I did the same with the linings going through the troughs, but I think if I was going to do this again I would just have one long piece and then cut it afterwards. Then I put the beam back in and put the bolts in it just to make sure that everything stayed in line. I painted the beam with primer to protect the epoxy and then I could reattach the burger. I have a force day again. So I can go sailing. I reckon it's definitely stronger than it was.